This video is going to pose a few questions for you. I think I've got the answers, but I'm not going to give you them because I couldn't legally anyway. Um, but I'm going to let you try and work this one out for yourself. But I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and see what you think. Now, um, when my father was born, he was one of eight. And as the times got closer to my generation, I was one of three um, born uh, to my father, obviously. Um, and my daughter, I have one daughter. Now, I know there are other families that have more, but generally speaking, um, the population um, wasn't creating as many people. And in, in um, I know for a, a fact that in Ireland, it got to a stage where it was in decline. Now, with this in mind, right, and we lately, over the last sort of 10, 15 years, they've been putting pressure on liberals, especially in the left, um, and maybe even some on the right, saying that, the, the world can't sustain the population that it has and that we need to either not have any more kids for a, a while or breed less. Now, I know over in places um, over in Asia where they said that, you know, you could only have one child. And this, this was a problem because there were a lot of female orphans because they wanted their name to carry on. So they wanted a son. And this has had a massive knock on effect over there. But that's an entirely different video. So imagine this. Our population's in decline. So why is it we're building all these new houses and there's not enough housing? Now, I know that the, and this is going to be about colour as well. I know that the white population in the UK is in decline. There's lots of reasons for this. Generally speaking, um, people are out for themselves a lot more. There's a lot less sense of family, as I'm sure you're all aware. And a lot of people want to go on holiday or they want to spend money on themselves. They want to be free. They don't want the obligation of having to be tied to having kids and all that that it entails. I have to say that they're a gift, children, by the way. And yes, you might say that, oh, I got all these holidays when I was young. But when you look back later on, you probably won't have as fond of memories of those holidays as you would have having your kids growing up and looking at how they became and the pride that you would have in them. But that's another video as well. So if... We are trying to reduce the population. Now, there, some would say that, that a recent thing lately was all part of that. That I can't talk about either, but you know exactly what I'm on about. So, why is it, right, with a declining population and all the rest of it, we feel the need to take in thousands and thousands and thousands of people from other countries? We started importing Polish workers, Romanian workers, fine. And then they gave them the shittest jobs that they could and treated them like utter crap. But the Polish and the Romanians were pleased to get the wages. I have to say now that they've worked out what's going on now and they're not going to take it anywhere near as badly as they used to. Good for them. So we now have people piling across the channel. They're coming in on the back of trucks. This is another thing. I have people that have seen this at the moment. People that are coming in on the back of lorries. Now, here's the thing. If you're a criminal, okay, you can't make it into this country through, through legitimate means. So you have to come in on either a dinghy or preferably smuggled in the back of a vehicle. Because if you come in in a dinghy, you've still got to get processed. The idea being that if you are part of a criminal gang that has to go back home occasionally for their own reasons, whatever, and then you've got to sneak back into the country, then you will come in on the back of a truck. But I digress. The point I'm trying to make here is if we were nicely declining, which is exactly what they wanted, why is it they feel the need now to flood us full of um, people who will breed? Because that's their culture. That's their nature. That's what they're used to. You're taking people out of the third world who have large families and then you bring them here and they won't assimilate straight away. So they'll keep a lot of their cultures, you know, like stabbing each other and that kind of thing. Rape. Uh, um, and all the other things that are culturally diverse. But the question is why? Why is it that now with a, a, a white population in decline, why is it they feel the need to flood this country full of people that will outbreed us? Why? If they'd have not let anybody into the country, right, they'd have had their 
diminishing population exactly like they wanted, right? Because that's what they're telling us, right? That's the whole point, right? Or is it? Or is it they're just trying to tell old Whitey to stop breeding because, well, they don't like him. Now, we've seen the latest hit pieces. I mean, at the moment, black people um, in different parts of uh, the world, America and over here, are finding it that they can take it upon themselves to insult and assault white people with relative impunity. It's encouraged. And there's many videos of them saying that to be white is the worst thing in the world. To be white is terrible. Um, I would never want my son or daughter to date a white man or a white girl. So, is it me or is it just the fact that they're going to try and breed us out completely out of this country and turn this country into something completely different? And if so, who's behind it? Now, that's the question. I'm fairly sure I know exactly who it is. But you can't say that because, well, there's laws against that, isn't there? Now, these people can't do it on their own. They have to find odious little creatures uh, who are all about themselves. They want fame, they want fortune, they want notoriety, and they want, in many cases, things that they legally can't have. But if you get yourself into a position of power, you can have anything you like and it will get covered up. Um... You can look at, say, for instance, the likes of all the people that have been in um, the premiership over here, prime minister, right? All of those people have ended up, they've come into the business with very little cash or some cash, and they've ended up leaving with far more money than that job could ever have supplied them with. So they are rewarded. What are they rewarded for doing? Well, selling out their country for a good one. Um, you can look at, say, for instance, over in Northern Ireland, the people over there. They're getting massively funded for selling out their people. Nice of them. Um, you've got to look at Germany. The likes of the people that have led Germany. What have they done to it? Well, they've destroyed it for the future. And they've got paid handsomely. Look at Macron. Well, Macron actually came from a certain banking fraternity uh, before he actually found himself in a position of power. But these people cannot do... There's not enough of them. But they do hold the strings of power and what they do is they then corrupt and bribe with their money and it's easily done other people who then do exactly the same this trickles down and what they do is they set up schools and universities and there's like talent scouts i suppose and there's family bloodlines as well that you know they will carry on their father's work but they look for the lights of these people at a very young age and they guide them and they teach them how to think and to think and understand that they're very different to us. That we are just nothing more than a commodity. We're nothing more than a, 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 a some figure of something, not even to be treated as human, because for us, we know that these people aren't like us. They think differently. They act differently. Most of them have very little uh, remorse. Uh, they have very, very little empathy. Uh, psychopaths generally don't. And they're, even if, even if they're not the most psychotic type of creatures, they're, they're trained. And it was like Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany just didn't happen. It was a period of grooming. The entire population over there was groomed and seduced for a period of at least 20 years. Just enough that when the thing started happening, they could overlook it or... When things started happening, um, say for instance on the battlefront or back home, they could look at the people they were doing it to and say, well, these people aren't human. No different to cattle. And I'm fairly sure that the people at the very top can look at us in the same way that you might look at, say for instance, cattle or sheep or lab rats or anything like that. They just don't look at us the same. And they don't have any sense of understanding of what we're going through and our suffering because they're incapable. And these are the people that are making policy at the moment for us. These are the people that are our elected leaders. Now, this is something else. They've been taught to lie their entire time to us because they're, they're totally aware 
that should the truth ever come out, and I mean properly out, that we would go around and lynch them because that's what's happened in the past. That's what humans do. When they've stopped being listened to and they've been punished for years on end and they've suffered and they've suffered and they've found out that these people did it knowingly, willingly, and they made money out of it, then people generally tend to forget about the law and get a bit medieval. That's what's coming, by the way. I am 100% convinced of it. That as society falls down and people start to work it out for themselves, that they will take the law into their own hands. I have to say, I don't actually feel too bad about that. If I was to see a load of politicians that were complicit of making people's life miserable... I'm listening. Well, <laughs> isn't that amazing? Just digital stuff going, I'm listening. We know this. We'll be listening to all the time. But no, going back to what I've said, if, say, for instance, uh, the, uh, uh, a massive group of people had worked out... The Sorry, same, I don't understand. Just fuck Please off. Please say that again. Fuck off. Sat now, just do what it wants. I have to say that if there was a group of individuals that found out that certain political people were trying to do the worst possible things to them and had been for a long time and then took them out and did bad things to them, I wouldn't care because I'd have no empathy for them. Why? Because they had none for me. Now, some might say that it makes you no different to them. Difference is, I don't go around actively trying to seek out the demise of other people, the misery of other people, the suffering of other people, the transfer of any sort of wealth from these people to myself. I don't perpetrate the acts of evil on a daily basis and enjoy it. I don't sit there in massive comfort and food, wealth, servants and all the rest of it while I know old people can't put the heat in them or feed themselves while people who have faithfully served this country are now on the streets. I... I, didn't, I wouldn't sleep well at night. Do you know what? They took the piss out of Gaddafi. But he did say that everybody in this place, in this country, will get home. And the last person to get home would be my mother. Turns out that she actually never did get home. But the point being is at least that guy, the mad dog of the Middle East, as he was named, had some sort of understanding of his people. This would be why he could drive around in one car around the streets of his country hanging out the sunroof and not get shot. Amazing. And yet, you look at the lights of uh, the President of the United States. He has to have a limousine called the Beast that's bomb-proof, bullet-proof, gas-proof, all the, all the rest of it. If you look at our Prime Minister, has to go around on a convoy. And you look at the, the, the leaders of the West who have done the worst things all over the world and they have to have such a massive security detail. Why? Because people hate them. And yet you look at some of these other people that were claim to be dictators and they didn't need a massive security detail because the problem is, is the bad people are writing the news. The bad people are writing history. The bad people are just, these are the people that educate us as we grow up. So my education growing up was taught that these people won the war here. These people fought the war there. These were the bad people. These were the bad people. When you actually get to it, not everybody that they said was bad was actually bad. And certainly not everybody they said was good was actually good either. But there you go. Well, I've had a rant long enough, and I think I've probably had my 15 minutes. I don't know, because it's going to take forever to tell me, because that's the way this thing works. And yes... So, as you might not know, or you might know, we are having a live stream, and it is on the 14th and the 15th of April that weekend, okay? And that will be with all the guests like Paz, Pap, uh, Bass Welshman, Luke Uncaged, Winston Smith Taxis, myself, Daniel Bostock, hopefully. And I haven't got older John Wong, so that might not be happening, but uh, there are probably going to be others. And we will be doing it all that weekend, so it's just going to be a sit-down around my... Uh, around my uh, place, so that should be a good laugh. The The guy that's just walked past me is um, the guy that can't watch my videos, <laughs> bless him. He's a nice guy, but he just doesn't want to be woken up <clears throat> or doesn't agree, whatever. The others, oh, they're worse, they're worse than me. <laughs> when I found out, I was like, oh my God, there you go. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I am gonna put some content out on the other channel soon, but as this is my main channel, uh, this gets the most. Right, the sun coming out.
I'll see you in a bit.